Hello, this is Arnas here and welcome back to Luck of the Draw 2. So, we are here after the break and uh, we are now in the bracket phase. So, on one side we've got Castor and Pollux by Scythefen. So these are a relatively fast craft with uh, uh, with uh, rail guns of the medium caliber. I think that the advantage here on uh, on Cypher and Sight is uh, is maneuver maneuverability and speed. So this is something that it can use against uh, Barstack weapons. However, on the weaker side is the actual armor. And uh, I'm not 100% sure how the weapons will do against uh, quite heavily armored Bastak. So this is uh, a big unknown. I think that, I think that Bastak is quite well prepared to take uh, the APS guns, uh, the rail guns from Castor and Pollux. So let's now jump quickly onto the other side and we've got the Bastak here. So uh, a joint craft, uh, we've got the hilt and the Bastak itself. Uh, of course uh, the craft is by Arthur and uh, yeah it's got uh, a quite large but slow firing APS gun. It's got uh, a couple of crumbs and also uh, and also some missiles. I think that these are remote controlled. Yeah, for sure, remote controlled missiles. So for for Basdak, I think uh, again it's uh, it's going to have a bit of issues in my opinion because its uh, weapons, uh, especially the the cram cannons, are a bit bit slow. I'm not sure if they are they will be able to hit this uh, fairly evasive uh, uh, opponent. But the missiles, maybe they, they can uh, just uh, stop them in the water and then uh, crumbs can finish up the job or the APS will get a, a good sniping shot. Uh, but yeah, uh, it needs to rely quite heavily on its armor because uh, it's not really moving much. So without any further ado, let's uh, start the battle. And uh, just to add here, uh, the loser of the match is going to be eliminated. There is going to be also some voting, but it depends on the outcome of the battle. If one of the craft is eliminated, then there's no point doing the votes. Okay, the, looks like uh, the, uh, the uh, rail guns are connecting. And a shaving of uh, Basdak armor, but it, this is happening very, very slowly. Just 3% was shaved off. And looks like a similar situation on the other side. Also, APS gun actually hit. So managed to do some minor... Uh, minor chunk was uh, deleted from the bow of one of the, the boats. Uh, funnily enough, uh, the cram cannon did some, yeah, burst exploded, but the second one, very good hit and uh, the second boat lost the front turret, so this is the first significant damage done. And uh, yeah, but let's have a look at the other side, because uh, the small boats have, uh, did here quite a lot of damage. They are actually ahead in points and yeah, the APS gun is basically disabled. It still tries to shoot but uh, there is almost no barrel, just just mountlet here, nothing else. And uh, yes, massive massive uh, issues here. It looks like the cram, uh, all cram cannons or just uh, some of the cram cannons, not sure have been eliminated. I, I didn't see any uh, arcing shots from those crumbs, so I think that's uh, that's it for the crumbs. So now the only weapons are those uh, are those remote controlled uh, 
rockets and uh, this hit did not impress the Pollux. However, Castor in the meantime was actually eliminated. I didn't re realize that. So Bazdag is actually in the lead, but only one weapon time remaining. But okay, it delivered a very good hit and the front cannon has been shot off. I'm not 100% sure, but it looks like it's got... Uh, is it hit? I have no clue. No, it cannot be, because the... Oh, maybe these are hit. Ah, I need to check after the battle, but... But this was really a very, very good hit. Uh, however, the rear turret is still doing some work, so it's still shooting, still, still trying to... Uh, snipe Bastak and yeah, the, the, the craft is uh, at 66% right now and uh, those rockets didn't make it. Fell into water and uh, and did not connect with, uh, with Pollux, which is still at 90%. Okay, Bastak has issues and uh, it is listing to one side. The rockets still seem to be okay but fire comes now from the rear end and it can damage those uh, those uh, rockets those missiles so i'm not sure if they are still really operational yeah looks like a lot of blocks are missing here so this is a really really close match and uh, yeah, just a couple of hits away and uh, and Bazdak is going to despawn and yeah, I think only the the only the Bazdak itself, uh, no, the, the hilt is only uh, the only part remaining at 59%. Yeah, those uh, those ray guns, they uh, they definitely can do some critical damage. And yeah, that's that's actually it. Uh, sometimes the, the custom battle does not uh, despawn the defeated craft right away. But uh, yeah, that is it. So there's going to be no voting because uh, uh, there's still 45 uh, percent points remaining uh, for Siphon. So I think there's uh, there's no real way for uh for uh for arthur to actually get all the points uh, necessary via the beauty vote to actually win so this one goes to cypherven congratulations he will pass to meet his opponent in the next battle and condolences to arthur this was a very unique uh, design uh, lots of good weapons but unfortunately it's uh, it's fighting days uh, have come to an end now all right let me quickly load the second battle uh, we are going to keep keep this to this uh, dual battle per episode so let me just load a new craft and uh, resume uh, the match all right so we are back again uh, in the bracket phase so let's have a quick look at our uh, matchup uh, for this battle on one side we have uh, Geo Team by Geo Darian, and we've got Big and Smalls. Uh, these are quite uh, well armored uh, craft with uh, some heavy hitting weapons. The smaller one has uh, APS, and the bigger one has Cram. But these are not mortars; these are uh, flat trajectory uh, weapons. So the craft are not really that uh, agile, uh, they are relatively slow, however they weapon spark quite a good punch. And uh, yeah, I think that they just need to land those weapons and uh, if they can do that and withstand the fire, everything should be okay. On the other side, we've got Dragon Slayer's designs and uh, this is uh, abject failure. So uh, quite uh, quite tanky craft as well. 
uh, maybe not uh, as tanky as Biggie. Uh, it's got uh, an APS gun mounted. I think this is a fixed turret actually. And it's got also some torpedoes. Uh, and some small uh, cannons in the back. So yeah, I don't really think that uh, those torpedoes will be uh, in any way avoided. I think that they are going to be landed, but uh, is it going to be enough DPS? Uh, we'll have to see about that because those torpedoes are quite small. The gun is more like a decoration, I think, uh, but yeah, maybe it can uh, do some extra damage here. But uh, is it going to be able to withstand Cram, uh, Barrage and the APS? Uh, yeah, for sure for some time, but I'm not sure if it's going to last uh, long enough. And in the back we've got uh, uh, the Shityonagar, which is uh, sort of the uh, torpedo uh, raft, pontoon. And uh, yeah, again, it's got uh, some uh, good and agile torpedoes, but the warhead is not really that big. So I'm not sure if it's going to be enough to uh, take out the... Uh, the well-armed uh, opposition and the well-armored opposition but yeah this is just a speculation in my opinion uh, Geodarin has an edge but let's see how it's actually going to uh, to, to be and uh, alright the first shot came from uh, Dragon Slayer's ship but the return uh, salvo is going back for now no damage done APS is missing, but the cram have landed. Yeah, this is what I was uh, afraid of. So those crumbs, uh, are, uh, they can target uh, such a slow uh, boat without any problem. And when they hit, they deliver a lot of damage. But let's see, the torpedoes are already on the way. Uh, so are they going to have enough reach? Because uh, big and smalls, they are relatively slow so they take their time to actually get to the target but yeah no issue and another torpedo hit okay but the damage is not that great just a four percent missing on biggie and it keeps on firing and uh, the rear turret is still in reserve okay another hit Right, not, no, no, not really, it's not really impressed uh, by those torpedoes and keeps on firing. Smalls is going strong in the front. Uh, the the sonars are targeting the biggie instead of smalls because it's a smaller target. And... Yeah, we have some good crumb hits and when the crumbs land, yeah, it's trouble. However, object failure is still standing in, in 80%, 80% health, so it's not, yeah, it's surviving that barrage really, really well. It's built to last, but no weapons remaining as far as I can see. Maybe those torpedoes, uh, maybe. Maybe I'm not 100% sure. Okay, yeah, the torpedoes are still there. But the ammunition uh, storage, the reload time is uh, is a bit, a bit bit of a problem here. Big and small is really focusing fire. The bigger craft here. And I think that finally uh, the rear, can, uh, rear uh, turret is brought to bear. So this is going to be a double firepower from Biggie and yeah it shows 69% for object failure so it's quite getting quite close to being this point all right another two hits and another two hits so relentless barrage APS has a quite flat trajectory and we can see that it skipped over the water but uh, the cram cannons they do not have this issue 
and they keep on landing. In the meantime, let's see uh, how big is holding up because it must have uh, taken a little bit more of those uh, torpedoes. But yeah, just as I thought, it's just a little bit too tanky to get any kind of uh, critical damage. And now it's uh, slowly kiting away and the bigger craft, the abject failure is, a his is history. And all we have here is just this fragile torpedo boat. So I don't think it's going to stand so long against uh, those cramps. However, they, it is moving a bit more erratic way, or it used to, <laughs> because now it's shut down. The engine has uh, evaporated and we can see the parts here. And okay, this was actually AI dead. Yeah, it was AI deaded. Okay, so condolences to Dragon Slayer. Uh, uh, your designs have made it here to the bracket phase, but in the very first battle it was uh, eliminated by uh, Geodarian's designs. So congrats to Geodarian, a very dominant victory here. Uh, I think that uh, robust con construction, uh, good armor and uh, heavy hitting weapons was a key to victory here uh, and uh, you did not fail to deliver. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next episode.